the curse of dimensionality. So what is that thing? Such a machine learning term, it's great. I like to think of it as some methods really don't like it when data points are lonely in space. So let me explain. If I shine a bright light from that wall onto there, and it projects all your shadows against that wall, so now your shadows are in one dimension, you are all on top of one another and not lonely at all. Add another dimension along here, and now you're a little more spread out. Now I'm going to add another dimension. Which floor of this building are you sitting on? It's still same east-west, but now the height varies. All of a sudden you look around you, where are my friends? It's lonelier. Now I add another dimension. Which hour of the day are you doing your vigil? Now it's really lonely. And so every time I add a dimension, I don't require only the same amount of data to compensate for it. I need exponentially more people for you to have as many friends around you as you do now. And some methods are really sensitive to loneliness, and so they are really sensitive to the addition of one more dimension. Things look very empty around the data point. That is what the curse of dimensionality is about. Okay, this is great for fast model updates. What can be faster than finding out what Heather is and just putting that row underneath the rest of the data set? There you go, there's your updated model. This is good when local structure is key, when you think that maybe if there's a few statisticians around, other ones just pop up like mushrooms, rather than more statisticians as we head towards the North Pole. If you're dealing kind of with the first one, this is a good bet. And in order to pull it off, you have to be able to actually store and query the whole data set. So that shouldn't take forever. <laughs>